The Cursed Crusade. Nope, me neither. But when you're browsing through Game Station and you come across a box that looks like this, well, you're gonna have to see what it's about. The game begins with... The Prologue. Starring man who looks suspiciously like a medieval big boss fighting Muslim forces in Syria. It turns out that he's a member of the Knights Templar. Oh jeez, I thought that after seven years we'd finally manage to escape the Knights Templar, but here we go again. He meets with another Templar who gives him a box and hastens him to escape. It seems they are all looking for liberation and salvation. We shall meet again. In France. Oh, don't wish that on the poor guy. And then he turns into a fiery demon. Moving on, we see that he is narrating the story of his son, Dens de Bale, and that of a Spaniard who sounds more like a Mexican from a bad 60s spaghetti western, named Esteban Noviembre. Right you are, hombre. I am Lawrence, and your share weighs uncomfortably in my pockets. I am concerned. Will I be able to carry what's left in your purses? Oh, no, wait. I know who he sounds more like. Jesus. You said it, man. Denz has been driven to wandering by his wicked uncle. After you fight a few people in rather sluggish combat, Death turns up. While well, rather something calling himself Death, as it can't really be Death because he doesn't speak in all small caps. He says he's here to claim your soul and you flee into a church. This place is hallowed ground. A threshold you cannot cross. Holy ground, I under! Huh. So Death in this world can be staved off inevitably by simply staying in a church. See, I told you he wasn't death, as he's rubbish. I bet he doesn't even like cats. Dens continuously proclaims to not death that it isn't his time, and Esteban here just looks confused. We now cut to the siege of Martin del Glaze's castle in southern France. Now, no, wait, hang on a second. This guy is the same one who we saw in the prologue. So not only did he manage to escape all of the attackers, but he also made his way from the castle in Syria and sailed either all the way from Syria to France, which is unlikely, or more likely sailed from Syria to somewhere else in Europe and then marched to France. I don't believe he could have gotten back there so quickly. But hey, I wouldn't be a pedantic gamer otherwise. You're in the army besieging his castle under the orders of Boniface de Montferrat and his commander, Baudouin de Flander. Mercenaries! Time to earn your pay, dogs. On this night, you will either feast until dawn, or the crows and worms will feast on your rotting carcasses. It matters little to me. Wow, that's a truly inspiring speech there. Henry V, eat your heart out. They rain arrows on us like a pissing cow. Pissing cow? What? So we advance undercover to avoid the arrows. Charge! Despite the cover, everyone else dies. Well, that worked well. You can now use the crossbow like a third-person shooter weapon. This kills me, as he seems to be able to reload the crossbow about four times faster than anyone else at the time could. The whole point of the longbow was that you could fire it far quicker, whereas the crossbow generally had to be wound up. You then throw a bag of explosives and fire a crossbow bolt at it, and it explodes? Okay, I guess you could say the fire may have set the bolt alight, but I'm not sure. And if it didn't, then how can a bolt hitting a bag of powder just spontaneously blow up? Also, apparently weapons clashing and hitting armor create a torrent of sparks in this world. The game also has a co-op campaign, but at least the AI is competent enough in single player, except when it won't let me get up the fucking step! Yes, retreating to the dungeons, the place known for its ability to let you escape. Well, at least in Cyrodiil, maybe. Finally corner Martin nowhere near the dungeons, might I add. After losing, he then goes all one-wing angel on us and turns into a demon. We fight again, and Esteban is understandably confused. As am I. Stand up and fight if you want to live. You got a caballero. I'll fight with you. I owe you my life, but you owe me an explanation. I will answer all of your questions later. After defeating him, medieval Tim Curry over here sends you away and then demands a relic from Martin. Do you think I'm stupid enough to have kept it here? I gave it to a man who deserved it. More than I. But I have seen the sun shine greater than even that night. Boniface, you imbecile! Sir? Ah, enough of your blasted riddles. Who is the sun you speak of? Tell me, Martin. Your hatred of the world will bring you to your dumb mind. From this, Boniface is able to deduce that the guy he just sent away was the son of a crusader knight, and therefore he should be followed to the Holy Land because Martin said he gave the relic to someone else. Okay, 
Beyond that somewhat significant leap of logic, though it does sort of make sense considering he knew Martin had just fought Dents, if this asshole here had just kept his mouth shut and not gloated, then the villain of the piece wouldn't have been any of the wiser! Dickhead. We then cut to a tournament sign-up where our hero tries to get rid of his companion who has helped him thus far without even giving him the promised explanation to the whole demon thing. Dick move, guy. I am Dens de Bale, son of Jean de Bale. I wish to enlist in the tournament. Very well, my lord. Uh, who shall be your companion of arms? This man. His name is Esteban Noviembre. So be it. Also, I'm pretty sure you need more than simply saying your name and your father to gain entry to a tournament. You would have had to provide your lineage for generations, and I highly doubt you could just get a random Spaniard involved as well. It seems destiny has a sense of humor. Fate, it seems, is not without a sense of irony. After teaching a career mercenary some basic things he should have known for years... Let's review another technique. The deflection counter. Deflection what? Never heard of it! You enter the tournament and fight your way to the finals where you face, oh, you again. And you pull broken swords. Well, that just seems like poor organization. I stroke of misfortune. It seems our champions, the size the Bale and Noviembre, have drawn the broken weapons. What, you actually put broken swords in there deliberately? Assholes. After beating him, he calls his guards and the tournament holders just let this happen. This is not Nam, there are rules. Hey. Anyway, he turns into a demon and wait, wait a minute, what are these people seeing? Are they just like, oh hey look, those dudes just turn into demons, whatever. The young Debeil is worthy. Go, treat with him and offer him what he wants. His chance to join our army. As you wish, man. Will we also need his companion? The old Spaniard? Yes, but I can't recall his name. September, I think. Or December. I thank God I wore my corset because I think my sides have split. <laughs> Good to bail. Good. 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 Help me understand, amigo. What is this curse? Why do I see the burnt men and the flaming skeletons? Don't worry. We will free ourselves from the curse. We will find a way. That's not an answer, Dents. Let me get this straight. You're telling me that everything we've done until now has been because you believe that one old man will come back from a crusade, or quite possibly the grave, to single-handedly reclaim an entire castle? Well, when you put it that way, our hero comes across as a raving idiot. Then the sore loser sends more men after you. Also, the curse now allows you to break walls. <laughs> Hang on a minute, whose castle are we in? Because if we're in the host of the tournament's castle, wouldn't his troops have a problem with random people attacking us? And if we're in De Flanders' castle, why would we stay in a place owned by someone who seems dead set on gunning for our blood? After escaping the castle, our heroes ride to the Crusader camp. Oh, fuck, not him again. Your charade has been entertaining. But your performance ends here, little ten-pot knights. Entertaining? We've ridiculed your name. They can hear the Kingdom of France laughing at you all the way in Italia. Esteban actually makes a good point. Why is this asshole bragging when we've embarrassed him in public several times? Well, he turns demonic again and finally gets chewed out by the Crusader leader. In the tent, we finally learn that the curse is some form of divine retribution that afflicts particularly grievous sinners and their families for generations and condemns them to hell. So God punishes those for crimes they didn't even commit. The sins of our fathers. <laughs> Ain't it a bit? Not death then pulls us into a nightmare where the voice of Dens' father blares at him that it was his fault that his mother died and his brother took their land. Yes, it's the fault of the young son that his mother died. Yep, makes sense. Though this is more likely a ploy by Not Death to make him give in to despair because for some reason Not Death still cannot claim two soldiers. Especially now that they've discovered the sacred fire ability that allows us to purge and burn enemies. Oh, my soul is trapped in this cursed gate. And souls trapped indoors for some reason. Also, not death in this game looks a bit like Azrael. Doesn't he have anything better to do than stalk two random assholes? 
it turns out that the Fourth Crusade, of which Denz has just joined, starts to go awry when the Crusaders cannot afford to pay the Venetians for the navy that they are building to ferry them across to the Holy Land. Then the one good leader dies and is replaced with the obviously evil Boniface, who has made a secret tete-a-tete -tete with the Pope, while the commanders decide to attack the nearby city of Zara, currently held by the Hungarians to help pay the Venetians. What? You mean something ordained by the church does something cruel and unfair? Shock horror!